Welcome, yes, to the Savon Experience, a closer look podcast. So if you are listening, hopefully you are listening to us listening to us via Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcast, etc. Hey, you may be even on the Save On Experience webpage or Facebook page listening to the podcast. So thank you very much for joining the podcast. This is something I wanted to start so that, you know, I don't have to get out cute, girl. I can roll out of bed. I can still give you guns. And we can just have a personal discussion. So the podcast is with me and no, Gaya, girl, surprise her. I am so excited that we are doing this, girl. We needed to have a closer look, okay? We needed this. So anyway, I'm going to need you to go and mute that sound, girl, because we heard that noise. That's your computer. We need you to fix that, okay? And let's get started, girl. Oh, my God, I'm excited. Y'all, I wish y'all could see her. She is doing this thing. It is horrible. Oh. Down, down. Girl, sit down. Bitch, you swear. Okay, girl. Okay, girl. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Okay. So, that was cute or whatever. So listen, girl, so what's going to be the first topic for us? Like, what you got for us today? So, girl, you know, um, let me let me adjust my mic because I feel like your ass is screaming and I'm low. Let me hook me up. Um, we need to take a closer look. So how the, the question is, how close should we go? Oh, girl, close. I wish you go real close, real close. You know what I want you to talk about? And, and you ain't going to want to talk about it. You ain't going to want to talk about it. Because it's, it's like you always stay away from certain topics. Topics like what? Like, what you mean? <laughs> like, I mean, like what? What do I, what do I stay away from like the closer look should be about talking about certain things now i will make sure that i change it up a little bit because you know you got to protect the innocent those who's not on here you don't want to tell a business or whatever but you know we can talk about whatever you know whatever i mean whatever okay you sure okay so, what I think that you should talk about, you should talk about, like, when you started your transition. Like, what was that like? Because I want the people to know, bitch, <laughs> the back and forthness of it all. Because, girl, you had me confused as fuck for a long time. <laughs> it's like, bitch, are you the black Jesus girl? Like, are you Prince, bitch? Are you... Like, who are you? Are you Mary J. Blige, girl? Like, are you v- Vesta Williams? I mean, <laughs> bitch, because you was a plus size girl. Like, are you Vesta Williams? Like, what was it? Like, just tell us. Oh, so you want to go there. Okay. <laughs> I need something to drink. Hold on. Mm. Girl, get on. With my throat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And adjust my mic. Mm. Okay, so Jesus, where how mm, how old was I when I actually 
decided to just little girl stop playing quit jump roping for hard girl <laughs> and then do what you feel you need to do okay so i'll jump into it so you know to speak about the back and forth in which you brought up it was it i don't think it was back and forth i think it was more about discovery for myself because i had to really figure out what it is I don't want to say that I want it because it wasn't a want. It was trying to figure out who am I? Because for so many years, I didn't know. I didn't know who I was. I was just used to doing what everyone told me to do. Looking the way that everyone suggested I should look. You know, it wasn't like I could buy my own clothes or even express my identity because I never felt like I, I never felt like I pushed my identity down. I never felt like I hid it because everybody in my family, the girl, I've, I I started walking with a sachet Shantae. And, okay, girl. So that was before. You know, RuPaul coined that phase, Sachet Chante. You know, like I, I always walked femininely. I, anything that had any type of masculine association to it just didn't feel natural or authentic for me. So I never did it. You know, um, I was the kid that played with my sister's dolls and did their hair. So I knew that I wanted to be a hairstylist because I did their hair. So um, all of that, I just kind of knew. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it wasn't anything to discover. Um, I didn't know anything about, you know, attraction and sexuality and all that growing up I, I i was brought up in a very close knit a very um close to home religious family um i had strong religious leaders on both sides of the parentals maternal and paternal so you know i spent most of my days in church i mean to be real yeah it was in church so <clears throat> i didn't have a lot of experience with even knowing what gay was or any of that i just knew that i've always felt like a girl i've always did girl things i've always strayed away from sports even though you know, I was encouraged, I'll say encouraged, to, what you look at me like that for? Um, encouraged? <laughs> or made? I feel like you was made to play sports. I mean, because I've seen some of those pictures on those, you know, the little baseball league and stuff like that. And you looked very uncomfortable. I mean, your chest all punched out and your booty all perked up. It was giving you very much, you know, fish corn de gras. <laughs> it was very much gras. It was very much, is this a, um, is this a, um, what is the league where they have both the girls? Is this, is this a... One of those leagues where the girls and boys play on the team. Like, I was confused. Because um, I was like, girl, what is this little girl doing out here on this team? But all these boys and this little boy softball team. Okay, so you you just going to go there. You talked about when I played... Um baseball for the team called the Little Hogs. It is the name for me. I... I probably would have enjoyed playing baseball a lot more if the fucking team wasn't named the Little Hogs, girl. Who in the hell want to watch? And it was this doodle brown, brown, and white or tan colored uniform. So we out there in doodle brown and tan uniforms, and we call the Little Hogs. 
Girl, that shit wasn't attractive. That wasn't cute. It was, it gave me absolutely no inspiration. I, my mom, okay, so my mom definitely, I will say she was an athlete. She loved to play, to play sports. So she played, she played baseball and she played softball. She, well, softball girls play softball, basketball, ran track, like, Physically, she was like an athlete. So naturally, you want your child to, you know, be interested in the same things that interest you. It wasn't that I wasn't that child. I'm sorry. The first child is not the child. You're going to have to have a whole another child because this is not working. But she made me play. <clears throat> And I reluctantly played, since we're going to talk about the little hogs, I reluctantly played. I remember, oh, I hated going to practice. The one thing that I liked about the team was the fact that I had a lot of family members. So I had uncles and cousins that played on the team. And that made it a whole lot better, right? Because it was like the family plan. And the family, every summer, we would have like family baseball games that we would play every weekend. I think it was like Saturdays. Every weekend, we would have like a family softball game. We were really close, you know, as a family we did a lot of family things and now that I'm sitting here talking about that I realize how much I miss that like I miss the the closeness of the family you know what I'm saying I so yeah oh wow this is kind of like choking and emotional you know what I'm saying I mean girl so like let's Let's talk about that. So, you know, we can switch lanes. This is a closer look, so we don't have a set topic. So let's talk about family. How do you, you say you miss that? Are you guys close? Do you guys still talk? Like, what is what is that like? Oh, girl, I don't know if that's my story to tell. Like, I was a, I can talk about, okay, so I'll talk about things that, transpired before the fall i'll call it the fall of the family um it was so we were real close you know it was mostly my cousins it was oh girl i don't know if i want to talk about this shaquansha like this is really personal you know what i'm saying i ugh but it is the closer look. So we're going we're gonna to walk through it, girl. We're gonna... <laughs> girl, here's a box of tissues. You need some tissues to dry your tears. And can nobody see you but me, girl. And you ugly anyway. So, girl, I got the tissue. Just walk yourself through it and take your time. Take your time. I knew I shouldn't have this conversation with you because your ass is so inconsiderate. And so, like, not like non-caring for my emotions but anyway we're going to it so me and my family was real close so as a kid you know i didn't have a lot of outside friends most of my friends were my family members because when i tell you we were always together it was mostly my mom and her oldest sister and her kids and me so and my sister so me and my cousin and then my youngest uncle <laughs> oh my god my youngest uncle. So we all hung together. So, and then um, my cousin's oldest brother. <clears throat> so all the younger folks in our age group hung together. And yes, I had an uncle. I have an uncle that's younger than me, you know. So girl, they, they was, his family was getting it popping, okay? Um, but <laughs> so the younger ones, in our age group, we all hung together. So it was three of us, me, uh, my cousin, and my youngest uncle. And we hung together. And then you had her oldest brother. And then my mom's brothers, they were like in the same age group. And they hung together. So, but anyway, so we would we would do a lot of family things. We would have family reunions. You know, like family have family reunions. We would have, you know, on Sundays, my grandmother is a minister because she's still here with us. So she, you know, we would go to church to wherever church she's ministering. You know, obviously if she's, she was the patriarch of the family. So we would definitely, um, 
go to church where she's preaching. Um, me and my cousins and uncle <laughs> was in the choir. Girl, you know, ugh, that's another. So we was in the choir. And so, uh, yeah, so Sundays, we would be at church all day on Sundays, choir practice on Saturdays, and then we would have, like, family day on either Saturday or Sunday where we would have dinner, uh, play games in the summers, what have you. We was always together, you know. It, it was a very close family. And we weren't without our dysfunction. I can't really speak about the dysfunction because as a kid, I didn't get to see a lot of it, you know. Um, we just really just did kid things and it was always us <clears throat> you know so i was brought up in more of the um it was like east nashville the east nashville today now if, if anybody is listening to this podcast that's in the nashville area girl east nashville today is so different from east nashville back then <laughs> <laughs> like East Nashville wasn't bad, <clears throat> but it was different. So it was like where you would have, it was obviously predominantly black and you would have lower to middle class families that was there and also people who bought their homes. So it was a good mixture. I mean, a couple blocks down the road, there was all, you got your projects. It was called Settle Court. I think that's what it was called then. It was called Settle Court. And so you know, the head houses. It was just the typical urban neighborhood. And, you know, I went to school with mostly black folks. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, th growing up with all black people, you know, and you being a child with a lot of feminine qualities, it was always the feedback of, oh, you know, they got a little sugar in their thing, you know, a little sweet, and they do that little hand little thing, a little hand jigger, you know. Um, but like, I didn't understand what all that meant. I just knew that I was different, and I tried, so I definitely tried to play sports unsuccessfully i would often get like the <laughs> the the um what are they the trophies just for being there <laughs> didn't do much i was just there so i would get the token trophies you know the kid that was like you know you know what i'm saying yeah, you will get those trophies just for participation, <laughs> just for being present. Thank you for coming, although you did shit to add to the quality of the team. you probably the reason why we lost most of these damn games. But yeah, so you said that you grew up in a typical black area, and you mentioned that you just was you. You didn't, you know, you, you didn't know about sexuality and all those other things so when would you say you knew like you the moment the defining moment where you knew you was gay as fuck you was gay as a two dollar bill um it's the girl it's a two dollar bill okay girl bitch fuck you first of all you big lip heifer but um Gay is a $2 bill. I didn't know $2 bills were gay. I know that they're different. They're unique. They're not often found. And I actually I actually have a $2 bill in my wallet. I keep it because you don't see them all the time. But anyway, when did I realize I was unique? I was different. I was that bitch, as Lizzo would say. Um, What grade was I in? Was it? Was it fifth grade? Ooh, was it fifth grade? Or was it fourth? I want to say fourth or fifth grade. And it was a, like an aha moment for me. Because I'm not going to say that I knew I was gay. I'm going to say that I knew I liked boys. Because I knew I liked girls. But me looking back on the younger me, the liking girls was more, oh, she fine. Like, her clothes is fine. Her hair is fine. Like, she she that girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, she's so cute. You know? And so just admire the admiration of the girls. I thought that was attraction. I don't know. Um... But they were just cute. Like, their clothes was cute. Like, the girls' clothes were always better than the boys. And 
my mom, God bless her heart. I don't know if she'll ever hear this podcast, but you know, she was. She, <laughs> I felt like she dressed me antiquated. I felt like <laughs> she dressed me like a little old person child. That's how I feel. Now she don't see it that way, but and I think most kids probably feel like their parents dress them real messed up. Um, I just. I feel like I was in the 80s wearing very much still 70s clothes. Like, who is in elementary school in the 80s, fifth grade, what bell bottoms are? Girl, this wasn't the 70s. I didn't grow, I was born in the late 70s. But girl, we're in the 80s. They're not wearing bell bottoms now, girl. They're wearing like leg warmers and jeans and stone wash jeans and blue jean jackets and my jeans <laughs> girl my jeans were bell bottom and they were tight at the top and then big at the bottom now that's cute now but think about being a child in elementary and you just want to look like your friends you want to have the fashion of your friends you're not really trying to be you know the stick out person and then it's different from having you know, older taste. It wasn't, it was the 80s. It was probably like 10 years ago when they was wearing the bell bottoms. It ain't had time to come back around again. <laughs> Girl, we not even wearing froze anymore. We got we full jerry curls. Oh, and I had a jerry curl. I did. Bitch, you had a jerry curl. Oh my God. So did you have one of those wet jerry curls or did you have a dry jerry curl? Bitch, it was dry. Uh, my mama didn't like to use a whole bunch of product, and that's why I never really liked my Jerry Curl because it didn't give you. I didn't see the curl pattern. Like I like my Jerry Curl when I first got it. So my grandmother, who like I, the my grandma. Okay, so let me back up. My grandmother, who was was a minister or is a minister because she's still ministering and she's doing a lot of great things for people now. Like let me just say this she has a non-for-profit to where she is feeding homeless and i'm going to make sure that i put that information for her gofundme in this broadcast in case anyone wants to you know contribute to her cause but she goes around town today and she feeds the homeless she's always been one of those people that have always taken care of others if you needed something she was there but anyway that's now we're going to walk through. This is probably going to be a series, an online journal of a lot of things, girl. And I don't really know if I want to share this shit with you, Shaquansha. I mean, why not? I, I will be patient. I will be trying to be as respectful as my Virgo having self can be. And and I'll, you know, what well, you know me, girl. Like, we we some of this stuff we've actually talked about. And you know I'm not that bad. But, bitch, just continue. So, anyway. You were saying that you pretty much was walking around looking like an old man. Okay, so I wouldn't necessarily say I was looking like an old man, bitch, but fuck you. <laughs> bitch, why you look like an old man now? Like, you got jokes. Oh, I didn't want to have this conversation with you. Anyway, I like an old... I just... Uh, I remember... Just let me just say this. I remember there were moments that I would steal. Uh, steal is a strong word. My eldest uncle lived, my mom's oldest brothers lived with us for a while when I was in elementary school. And I remember that I would actually pack some of his clothes. Ooh, that's going to probably show how big I was as a child. Because he was in like junior high and I was in elementary and I was like wearing his clothes uh, to school. I would pack them in my backpack, get to school and change my clothes because I just didn't like what I wore. But anyway, um, and his clothes was always better. He's he's always been stylish. His clothes are always better. But anyway, so yeah. So in fifth grade, I think was the time when I, fourth or fifth grade, I want to say fifth, that I realized that I was attracted to 
more than just girls. Because a friend of mine, I think her name was Kim, and she was a, she was a Caucasian friend, my Caucasian friend. So even though it was in a predominantly black neighborhood, I did have Caucasian friends. So my Caucasian friend Kim had a boyfriend, and I forget what his name was. I don't know if it was Billy or some. I want to say Billy, and she was like, "Oh my God, I gotta tell you, I think Billy is so cute." So she had a crush on him, and I, I said, "Billy, Billy who?" And so when she told me who the Billy was, the bitch, I was like, oh, bitch. I didn't say that. I didn't think or talk like that. <laughs> Girl, I'm gonna act like I was a little kid that was cussing. Because, you know, those precious kids and religious kids close to the cloth, they have potty mouths. But I was like, Girl, he is cute. So she had a crush on him and she was talking to him. And then, bitch, I had a secret crush on him as well so basically you like your friends man oh you a fast ass girl Ooh, so you didn't have morals then either Okay, not too much. I, I definitely had morals. It wasn't like that. I just realized that I had a crush on him and I was like and I wasn't shocked by it. I wasn't like, oh bitch, what does this mean? I was just like, I mean, he is cute. And I found myself looking at him more often than I used to. And I still look at girls too. They were still cute. But you know the strange thing about this time in my life? So, oh girl, I was doing a lot of stuff at this time in my life. I don't know if we're going to get into that. But anyway, so my girl friends, the my friend girls, I should say, my my friends who happen to be girls. <laughs> Let me just say that cuz I don't want to say girlfriend cuz I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to confuse the story. They would do little things. Like I had some nasty friends. I'm just going to keep it real. They were nasty. So I remember a friend and I'm going to say her name and this was yeah, it had to be four fourth fourth grade fourth or fifth grade and her name i still remember her full name and she would actually show me her privates girl yes she would show me her privates and so she would come to school and i remember we were on the playground at recess we didn't call it recess I don't know what the fuck we called it. We just called it. We was, went out to play. That's <laughs> our hood. We was a bitch. We went out to play. It wasn't recess hell. I started hearing about people calling it recess later on. But we went out to play. And on the playground, she sh pulled her pants down and showed me her stuff. And her stuff had like a, a, a patch of hair on it. And I was like, bitch, we are like in fourth and fifth grade. Why does she have a patch of hair on her stuff? And it looked like, thinking back, it looked like it was trimmed. You know how that, the girls will have like that that line that goes and have that little mohawk. I call it a, a, a coochie mohawk. Mohawk. So she had like a coochie mohawk. And I was like, why you get that? You know? And I guess she thought that was cute and that was going to make me like her or whatever the case the baby. But I know they didn't like me like that. Like we were all just friends. So I don't know why they, I don't know. Why do that? Why do girls always want to show they, I can say gay friends. They were always extra comfort showing me they stuff. Oh, I don't know, girl. So, pretty much, you were old manish little boy uh, on a playground, uh, looking little girls two wallets and stuff. Is that what? Is that what we understand that to be? Is that what you're trying to say? So, I think that's what you're trying to say. And does your mama know you was that manish? Like, does she know you was doing stuff like that? <laughs> your little nasty stuff. Okay, so we're not going to go there. We're not going to act like I was just doing all of that type of stuff because I wasn't. Well, I was, but I wasn't at school. Like, outside of school, I was doing a whole bunch of stuff. Like, my mama called me doing some shit. And I know she was like, what the fuck is this child doing? And where did they get this from? Because they're not seeing this type of behavior in the household because she didn't. I didn't see that type of stuff. But anyway, going back to the story, because we're not going to move ahead. Um, It was fifth grade when I knew that I was different or I was unique and that 
boys were cute and not cute as in cute cute but like kissable cute and I didn't tell anybody I just kept that to myself and I had just like that one little crush on I want to say his name was Billy uh I had a one little crush on crush on Billy who Kim I believe her name was Kim had a crush on as well and I just kept that shit to myself I mean I just did so you didn't have like a little boyfriend. You weren't like, when did you have your first boyfriend? Oh, my first boyfriend, bitch. I was like 20 something, 20 or 21 is when I had my first boyfriend. Oh, girl. You lay late. So what was that like? Well, so, um, there was this place. So, back up. I don't want to skip ahead because I feel like I got to fill some gaps. So, let's let's pace and walk people through this discussion because this is a closer look. So, going through high school, I didn't really um, have any boyfriends or anything like that. And I remember, you know, um, like after... What year was it? Seventh grade. So seventh grade, things changed drastically for me. Seventh grade is when I'm going to say the fall happened within the family. Oh, yeah, the fall. You talk to me about that. And I wondered, yeah, I, I think, mm, do you, are you sure you want to talk about that? I mean, maybe give some highlights for the conversation, but not too much. Oh, so you really trying to make sure my interest is protected. That's cute for you. Sometimes you cute. Um, so yeah, I want to say that's the fall. That's when things in as a kid, I'll say in the adult world got tricky for the family. So um we just were uprooted. Me and my sister and my mom, and I didn't really see my family anymore. That's all I'll say. We didn't see them. They didn't see us. Um, so as I continue to develop, you know, moving back to what I said earlier, you know, I didn't have a lot of friends. I only had um, family members. So I didn't have friends. So for my family members, you know, I get. I didn't get to see them. I was in school. I had then transferred from one school to the another school, and the school that I graduated from, it was different from the schools that I've been to because I've been in mostly urban neighborhoods and urban areas with majority black, you know, uh, percentages of students that's there. So the high school that I graduated from, it had a fair mixture of all races and creeds and things of that nature. And I believe that's where most of my development happened. A lot of people will say high school were their defining moments. And a lot of people will say high school was the moment that caused them the most pain. But for me, it was defining because I learned more about cultures, about people who didn't look like me. Um, the school that I went to was the first school that I've ever been to where we actually had bomb threats. And when I tell you, we had moved out of the hood. So, you know, it, it's funny how people will say that most of the urban inner city schools were bad schools. If anything, you would see fights. I mean, you're going to get fought, okay? And if you didn't fight back, you was going to get your ass beat. But we didn't have, like, I, you know, TV shows that had, like, gangs and stuff like that. We didn't have all that, even in the blackest of neighborhoods, we had badass kids, but you have badass kids everywhere. Even the blackest of neighborhoods, you know, we didn't have all those issues. It wasn't until I went, I was in the second semester of ninth grade and the school that we had transferred to. Hold on one second. <clears throat> Wait a minute, let me fix some things, but I keep talking. But the school that we trained, that mom transferred us to and the neighborhood that we lived in, it wasn't until we went, I, 
because my sister was still young. I went to that school that I learned about a lot of things. And so every Friday, it seemed like we were having a bomb threat somewhere. So they had to evacuate the school. And mind you, the school that I transferred from was an upper to, upper to middle class, uh, predominantly black, outside of the outskirts of Nashville. So it wasn't necessarily inner city. But that school was always on the news for having gang-like activity or fights or um, excessive uh, or huge amount of drug dealers and things of that nature. And what's so funny is I never witnessed any of that. Like, at this school, you know, they actually had undercover cops and stuff in that school. One of the reasons why <laughs> we also, Mama also pulled me out of that school, is because I was, I have always... I was like six foot something in like sixth grade. So for me, I've always been tall and the the people in my family are built like gladiators. So we look a lot more mature than our age indicated. So at that particular school, you know, <clears throat> it was a lot of things going on. She wasn't for it. She was like, my babies is not going to be brought up in this mess. I don't want them out here, you know, getting in fights, selling drugs, things of that nature. And and so she pulled me out. And what I found out after leaving the school is that I'm glad that she pulled me out because some friends of mine had told me that bitch people was watching me because they thought I was vice. They thought I was an undercover cop. Now, bitch. <laughs> Girl. Wait, undercover cop. So what was you like? Pebbles in uniform or something, bitch? Like, how did they figure? So they, 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 they thought they put the gay cop in the school, the school. Like, was that a part of your, like, undercover persona? Like, this gay, whatever... Okay, girl. So what you're not gonna do is go there. Like I, I admit that I had a little sugar in my tank, girl. But still, they did. I wasn't aware at the time, but after leaving the school, I was informed. And that school is where I met my best friend Anthony, who's so, uh, my late best friend Anthony. And so you know, we stayed in contact with girl. That's how I found out. I was like, wait, undercover, bitch. Girl, bitch, if it, girl, if a shootout or anything happen, bitch, I'm gonna be screaming, honey, with my hands up like the biggest queen, girl. Let's get this straight. I don't know why they thought that, girl. I was not about that life. I only knew about church, the Bible, look, look, Leviticus, Psalms, Proverbs, and all that, girl. Like, I had friends and friends and family that lived in the projects, bitch, but we all worked and we didn't have, like, oh, God, we had fights with people, but that was about it. So I wonder about that life. So anyway, moving forward to the school that I graduated from, it was a culture shock for me. I didn't talk to anybody, at least for the first year. And I had started at that school like the second semester um, of my ninth grade year. So I was just like, I don't know these people. I don't want to be over here with these people. It's a lot of people who don't look like me, and I'm not used to that. And for me, in, in my neighborhood as a kid, we watched the shows like Degrassi High and all that on you know, TV, and and they had all the issues, like the, the bullying and all that other shit. Like, I didn't experience that at the predominantly black schools that I went to. I mean, kids pick on each other and maybe we just didn't call it bullying. I don't know. But the gangs and for real, for real drug dealers, bomb threats and all that other stuff didn't happen until I went to the non-predominantly black school. And that's when I start learning about the differences in cultures, neighborhoods, and communities. The stuff that happened at my high school that never made it on the news, and then the stuff that happened at the high school, or the things that they said happened at the school that I transferred from were all false. 
I truly started to live the experience that, that so many thought that I lived at the previous school, at the new school. Now, what this school taught me was more about acceptance because I started seeing more people who didn't look like me from all cultures and, you know, and uh, communities, you know, definitely seeing more flamboyancies among the guys than I did at the previous school. Definitely seeing more of, we used to call them or well, the trench coat mafia is what they were called because these were kid uh a group of kids that just wore trench coats all the time i never understood it but they wore trench cups coats all the time so we called them the trench coat mafia and then we had the goths so those who were more gothic in their appearance I didn't see any of that at my uh, other school. I mean, you know, and then, you know, my other school had like majorettes and a good band. At this new school, we had like flag guard, color guard is what it was with the band. And their their pieces of music was like introduction into Disney. Whereas the old school was doing like Hammer Time and competing in it at HB. You know, you colleges, even though they were in high school, they were competing among the black schools. The band was the thing. So when you see like drum line and all that, that was like us in high school. But when I moved to the new school, it was more like color guard. It was, you know, a little, a lighter, gentler version of the band that I could not appreciate. So, and you had uh, the flag girls instead of majorettes. They confused me. Uh, so, but anyway, so as I maneuvered through high school doing things and and um, discovering who I was and then this body booming into what it was. Let's talk about that body. So you got a big old booty, a big old ass. And from what I was told, they used to call you Big Booty in your government name. Big Booty, Big Booty C. How did that make you feel? Um, it didn't make me feel no kind of way. I mean, bitch, I had I always had ass. I got a big ass, you know. It's always been the thing that people see first. Um, now that I've lost all this weight, you don't see the booty as much as you see the hips and that shape first. But imagine being, you know shaped like that in high school and not knowing what to do with that and then once again still not being able to fully um express via clothing how you feel so everything just felt ugh. all the clothes felt forced everything just felt so oh my god why do i have to wear this shit i just felt old and antiquated all the time. Even when I got to the point where I could start buying my own clothes, I would buy clothes, but you know, I never thought about dressing any other way than the way that I was used to being dressed. You know, I just would try to have a little more style with it. So in so in high school, bitch, I had a bob. Girl, my bob was fierce. <laughs> bitch. Well, I thought it was fierce. If I look back at the pictures, it's probably in cute. How many of us got pictures, bitch, that it wasn't cute? Girl, I saw that. I saw your high school pictures. Your hair was, it was all right, girl. I ain't gonna get excuse me. Your hair was cute. I'm sure it was giving what it needed to give at that time. The one pic that I saw that I remember of you, I think you was in, what was it? It was drama or theater arts, bitch, and you had this finger wave. Oh, my God. Bitch, yes, that finger wave. Um, you cause I would cut and do my own hair then too, and I had that finger wave. So I had a fade, and my finger wave was like the middle part, and it was waved out. So I guess instead of just getting waves like most people do, I just chemically processed my hand game. I have a finger wave, bitch. Em. You couldn't tell me shit. Um, and oh, see, also to paint the picture, you know, I had a open face gold in the front so i'm serving you a uniqueness of urban hood that i don't today so um i don't know it was weird it was weird in high school you know were there moments you know where people tried me and when i say tried me like i would get 
my so they did call me big booty t and both the girls and the boys would both say things, but the girls would be like some, you know, ooh la la and trying to touch my butt and stuff. And the boys wouldn't necessarily do that, but they would always make comments about it. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, what dude sit here and just talk about another dude's booty? Like, come to find out that girl, mm, they would be what we call trade. So I ran from that. Like I, I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable with that and there were opportunities and there was one particular person that was on the football team that we was cool and we was close and um girl they tried it they wanted to skip school one day and i was like bitch now this is how it was too so in high school my mom also worked at the school so it wasn't like I could do shit. Like she worked at the school. So when the girls would be like some big booty tea and this, that, other, she if she would hear, she'd be like, some, yeah, I better leave my baby alone. But the girls were like, you know, real cool. But I I ain't really do nothing. That's why I didn't have a boyfriend until I was 21 or damn near close, no, close to 21. And then the first boyfriend that I had, his ass was from um he was syrian what was he from um i want to get the right location right he was from i want to say kuwait yeah i know he was from iraq i do know that and he was older than me and it was something about a hairy oh well, it still is a hairy guy girl he was hairy as hell and i met him at this place called the jungle we'll have to talk about the jungle restaurant and lounge on our next podcast uh, a closer look um but before we get there let me just finish wrapping up this whole presentation so anyway you know i didn't really come into myself until i was in my 20s and when i graduated from high school i have a friend or i had a friend mm, we still cool but i had a friend her name is well, we're going to leave her name alone. She went with me the first time to a gay bar called Connections. Girl. And I was so nervous about going into this bar. Um, we get there. We drove. Um, or did I drive? Yes, I drove. Because. Yeah, I drove. And she went with me, and I was so happy she went with me. She was like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, my God. I want to cry. I, I want to call her and see how she doing. Um, we went and um, we had a cute time. I walked in. <clears throat> I had to have somebody sponsor me. I want to say she sponsored me because she graduated before me. That's why she went. She graduated before me. So she had to sponsor me to get in the club. And we got in, and I remember walking onto the floor for the first time, and I'm seeing, like, all of these men, and they, like, their shirts are off, and they're dancing to, like, this music I have never heard before. The music is called house music, but it's, like, I've never heard before. And it's, like, a do do and it's, like, do 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 Doom. And the closest thing to that beat that I had ever heard was a song called The Percolator. So a lot of people who hear the song by the City Girls, Twerkolator, well, baby, they got that. It was inspired by the song The Percolator. It's time for The Percolator. Boom, it's time for The Percolator. Boom, it's time for The Percolator. Boom, doom, 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 bitch. And we would percolate. I guess they twerk now, but we would perk and split and all that other shit. And so, but that's not how they were dancing in this club. They were doing this old, I don't know what type of dance it was, but bitch, the only dance that I could do was the percolator. So the whole night long, bitch, I'm percolating the whole time. I didn't know nothing about voguing. I didn't know nothing about wild, bitch. I know about catwalking. I didn't know nothing about any of this. I just remember walking in and <clears throat> girl, the gays can definitely tell when you fresh meat, baby. 
They know, and this was a huge club. Like it was three different sections of the club. You had the country and western side. Oh, this is Nashville, so you know we did the country and western bar, also restaurant. You had a gift shop. We had a gift shop in the club. You had an up, uh, two layer, a two level dance floor where they played techno, house music, etc. Up in up and lower level and then you had this huge theater that had both that was two levels connection was like the creme de la creme of nashville oh my god bitch i remember going to connections with you now it wasn't during that time because i girl i wasn't hanging out with your gay ass man but um <clears throat> I remember we went to Connections. Connections was cute. Like, and it had, like, a very diverse crowd. And I think by the time I met you, bitch, you knew how to do all the gayest shit because you was out there twirling and high-kicking and dropping it like it's hot. And you weren't twerkulating. So I think you had been in the scene for a while and become a bit seasoned because you was hot as hell. I remember a couple of times when you would actually leave. Okay, so so we're not going to, I'm going to cut your mouth mic off no ma'am we not we not we're not gonna do that we're not gonna tell my business like that we not at that this ain't that close of a closer look this ain't that close okay so we not mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. get get your life so uh <laughs> mm -mm, get your life girl no ma'am we're not gonna do that um but anyway let's talk about the first experience we'll be like a 10 minutes left and then we're gonna then it's this hour of the save on experience a close to look but um so the first time I was at the club, the guys, I was like, oh, they were so attractive. Like, there wasn't an ugly soul in there. And I don't know if it was because this was the first time that I was being honest with myself about liking boys. And 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 I feel like when you first come out, you, yo, I'm not going to say you will go with anybody, but you're not as picky. It's almost like, bitch, I just want a man, girl. I just want to be able to experience. And you got to remember, I think I was 18. Yeah, I was 18. So, you know how, well, the, the girls and boys today, it, their developing experiences are different. Like, you know, talking to my nephew, who in junior high and high school, they were very much very fluid. And, you know, the, the kids are more um, open about their sexuality and preferences. So they, you know, date, date the same. They do all that stuff now that we didn't do without getting your ass kicked or beat um but anyway so you know and they were just very welcoming like i felt like for the very first time in my life i felt like i found somewhere where i belonged where i wasn't the oddball um i felt at peace it was it, it was very easy to be addicted to that feeling because it allowed me to finally be free and everyone was careless and just just being their authentic selves. And I had never been anywhere with anyone who looked that much like me, who walked like me, who dressed like me, who spoke like me. It brought me out completely. And it was scary. I remember running out, leaving. Yes, I ran out. I ran out. It was overwhelming. And and, and my friend was like, bitch, we going back in. I was like, girl, let's go. I wanted to leave. I got to the car and she was like, bitch. Well, she didn't say bitch, but yes, she did. She said, bitch, we done got here. You have got to do this. I, you know, I think I want to, I'm going to message her as soon as I get off this um podcast because i i think she needs to i don't think i fully ever expressed to her how thankful i was to her for being there with me during that moment you know um it was quite the turning point for me and she was so supportive and so i don't know she was just great i'm just i I'm just really thankful for the people that, um, 
I had in my life. And so it sounds like to me that you had like, your first, like, would you say your first fag? <laughs> fag? Is that not politically correct anymore? No. No, that's not. That's not correct. You can't say that. And I wouldn't call her that because I just wouldn't call her that. She was just cool. You know, a lot of people give black women and, and, and black girls a hard time. But I have to say, most all of my supporters have been strong black women. Without black women being into my life, I wouldn't be able to be who I am today. You talked about uh, what well, we talked about, you know, work. And um, we st me starting work. And I want to get into that story, too, because once again, there were two black strong women that helped me during my transition at work in the corporate space. And, you know, it's always been strong black women that's helped me. So I, I see a lot of people that, you know, in the, the gay community who feel like the black culture you know, isn't as accepting. And I will say it, it, we have our share of problems in the black culture, but what I can say for me, the saving grace and the people that protected me the most have been black women, you know, starting with my mom, you know, she, even though she dressed me like a granddaddy child, she did everything in her ability and i would say even the impossible to make sure that i was taken care of and that i was able to live my life as as comfortably you know as i can she never made me feel unloved unwanted there may have been moments through the growing process that we had to talk about changes and challenges. And that was just new, but that still came from a space of her wanting the utmost best for me. So I'm very blessed to have black women in my life, but, um, but yeah, back to connections. Now that I've done that, an ode to black women, um, it was cute, but I didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't meet anybody at Connections during that time. And the time that I met my first boyfriend, it was at this place called the Jungle Restaurant and Lounge. And Restaurant and Lounge is kind of, mm, you know, what we call it that? The Jungle was very fitting. It was very down to earth and very, um... You know, when you fresh out of jail, just rolling into town a few blocks up from the bus station. So any... The when I say bus station, I'm not talking about the city metro bus. I'm talking about Greyhound, the the bus you take to travel from city and state to state. So you know where. Typically, if it's a bus station, you kind of know what that area gives. Um. So, but that. I will say, whereas Connections welcomed me from a experience of coming out, um, the jungle defined me in a more gutter but ratchet, you know, Miss Miss Sophia home now type of way. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about that. So Shaquansha, listen, thank you so much for joining me. I am excited to do this series with you and Hopefully, you'll be able to talk more than I did this time, you know. It's okay, girl, bitch. You do what you do. You always take over. Like you said earlier, you have that spirit of leadership is what you call it. I call it, bitch, you think it's always about you with your narcissistic ass. But anyway, it was cute. I'm looking forward to us having more discussions like this, too. So, I think this was a cute little first session. And we didn't even drink any alcohol, bitch. I know, right? We did good. I was I'm excited. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for listening to the Save On Experience podcast. And this series is a closer look. Okay. I'm gonna have to do something about this computer making all that noise in the background, girl. It's just too much. I also need to create me a little uh outing, a little exiting music. You know what I'm saying? For us so when we leave we can leave out with some music i'm gonna use my intro bye y'all